Good evening, everybody watching. If you are here, you can just pop something into the chat and let me know you are watching and hearing my voice okay. That would be great. I know we have some East Coasters and West Coasters. We're going to start in about four minutes at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And for those of you watching right now, you're going to head to bidbox.xyz. It'll look on just like that screen on the left-hand side there where it says Welcome to Bidbox. If you type in bidbox.xyz into your browser, either on your device or on another window on your computer, you'll head right to the page you're seeing on the left there. And if you log in with your email address, you'll be able to get a copy of all the slides you're about to see during this lesson. And we'll be on for probably around an hour, maybe a, a little below an hour. I have, uh, I think, about 30 or so questions or 25 or so questions. So we'll see how many we can get through in an hour. Welcome, Thomas, from all the way out west. I hope uh, most of you are having better weather than we are here in New York City. Uh, it's been a winter wonderland today, and nothing stops traffic more than four or five inches of snow in New York City. It's pretty interesting to look outside my window right now. Uh, looks like Thomas and Lisa have a potential partnership up in British Columbia here. That's a good thing. So the Bidbox URL is bidbox.xyz. That's exactly what you want to type into your browser, and it will send you to a site that looks a lot like what you're seeing on the screen on the left. Right? It'll say, Welcome to Bidbox. It'll ask you to put your email in today, and when you do that, you'll get a copy of all the slides at the end. So just Put in your email and click continue, and you'll see the screen you're looking at now. It'll say, thank you, class will start soon. And for those of you that are logged into both, we'll be starting in a moment or two. And if you want to chat or ask any questions at all during the, the session, just type it right into the chat box on YouTube. Hello, Allison. Welcome. I think this is a good time for the West Coasters. I like it. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's see when there's another Nationals out on the West Coast, and uh, I'll have to make a little detour to the to the West. All right, guys. So for those of you watching now, if you're not already logged in, just log in to that link right in the chat here. Bidbox.xyz will bring you right to a page where you can log in, and you can make your choices along with us throughout the entire lesson. Yeah, unfortunately, Allison, I'm not going to Hawaii. All my, all my good friends just left New York to head down there, and I'm a little depressed, especially because it started snowing today. <laughs> so nobody bring up Hawaii. <laughs> it would be a, a nice spot to see right about now. All right, guys, we're right at 8 o'clock, so we're going to start. Again, if you haven't logged in yet to Bidbox, just go to bidbox.xyz, and you will be logged right in. And we will start right now. All right, so the first slide you're, you're seeing on your screen and you're seeing on my screen here as well is what our raising and competition is supposed to look like. 
And if you're looking at this on your device or on another screen, you can make it bigger or smaller by pinching it in or out on a touch screen or just raising the size on your browser. You can see that we have two sides of this little chart here, raising with good hands and raising with bad hands. And you can see there's literally only one bid on the left hand side. And that's because anytime we're in a competitive auction, and what I mean by that is our partners open to suit or overcall the suit, and the opponents have also bid at least one suit. The Q bid of their suit, the suit that the opponent bids, will always show support for whatever suit our partner bid. And it shows 10 or more points and a minimum eight card fit in that suit. So the reason it's alone on the left is because it's literally the only raise in competition that will ever show any sort of strong hand. Every single bid on the right hand side of this screen here is weak. It's all less than 10 points. And that's because the qubit is the one that's going to show a good raise. So in a competitive auction, and a good example is let's say our partner opens a heart and our right hand opponent bids two clubs. At the single raise, one heart, overcall of two clubs, and we just bid two hearts, shows six to nine or six to a bad ten points. And that's what it always will show. So this is the bid that never changes meaning. Right? It's going to mean the same thing no matter when we make it, whether they've competed or not. The one that changes the most is the jump raise. And in our example, it would be one heart. Our right hand opponent overcalls two clubs. And if we jump to three hearts, we're actually showing a very bad hand, usually like somewhere around four to seven points and four card or longer support in partner suit. And the reason we do it this way is because when we are in a competitive auction, by definition, it means that both sides are bidding, right? And when they are showing an interest in this auction or any auction we're in, and we can preempt them, and make their job tougher. We want to take those opportunities. And we'll see some examples in the coming quiz here, but this is probably the weakest raise we'll ever make in competition, the jump to the three level. And then the jump to the four level is what you guys might recognize as the closeout bid. So one heart, two clubs, four hearts. Doesn't show a game forcing hand as far as values. It essentially just shows any hand that's less than 10 points and usually has five or more cards in the trump suit. Right? And what we're using for all the preemptive bids in these cases, it, as, as a guideline, we're going to use the law of total tricks, right? which says we can safely compete to whatever level is equal to the number of trumps we have together as a pair. Right? So this jump raise to the three level that we see here on the right, the reason we're able to jump to that three level is because we know we have a minimum of a nine card fit every time we do this. And the nine card fit says we can compete to the nine trick level and rather than take a slow approach there when we have bad hands we want to get there quickly because the worst worse our hand is the more likely it is that the opponents have some decent stuff right and the whole point of these bids is to try to keep them out of our auction as much as possible and honestly if they're going to get into the auction we just want to make it as tough and as high a level as we possibly can for them. So before I, I jump on to some questions on this topic, I want you guys to just take a few moments. If you have any questions, type them into the chat. I'm going to give you guys like 30 or 40 seconds to uh, ask any questions. And if I don't see anything, I'll just start with question number one. So send me any questions you want into the chat. And if I don't see anything in about 30 seconds, we'll just move on to the first question. And also give you a chance, if you haven't logged in yet, log in to bidbox.xyz, which is just typing that into your browser, whatever device you're on, and then pop in your email address and click continue, and you'll be right with us. All right, you guys must have spent some time preparing for the class. I don't see any questions here. And uh, real quick, I'll show you uh, on my screen here. This is where you can go to prep for any of the classes that you're going to see on here. This is my site, learnbridge.nyc. And you can go to a number of different ways. Uh, the seminars here have lots of good stuff, especially in the morning and evening classes. In fact, these are what I do 
currently and if you click on any of these you'll see a whole bunch of content right there and this would be a spot where we could certainly take a look at qubits and preemptive raises and that is just right from the home page you go to either seminars down here or you can go to notes and videos and there are a bunch of full classes here and a whole bunch of old stuff that I've popped on here over the last couple of years on the notes page so give it a look if you guys want any more studying but as of now let's jump on to question number one so on this auction our partner is open one spade and our right hand opponent has jumped to three diamonds and the question is what do we bid with this hand again our partner opened a spade our right hand opponent bid three diamonds which shows a weak hand and a lot of diamonds right it's a preemptive jump over call whoa we have somebody from australia wow welcome bernadette thank you and it should still work in Australia, bidbox.xyz, to make your choices. I hope it does. Actually, let me know, Bernadette, if you can see this okay. That would be maybe the first time this has been on another continent. So once again, our partner opened one spade. Our right-hand opponent jumped to three diamonds. What are we bidding with this hand? All right, I have two choices so far. I know there's more of you watching than that. So if you haven't made a choice yet, I'm going to give you a little bit more time. But if you want to make all of the bids that you're seeing on the screen here yourself, just log into bidbox.xyz on your browser and you can play along with us. All right, guys, so this is usually, and these are usually the two choices I, I see with this auction. And we see either someone bidding four spades or someone making the better bid of four diamonds. And let's talk about why that is. And think about that first slide you saw, guys. The only strong raise we'll ever have in a competitive auction is the Q bid. So in fact, those of you that were bidding four spades on this hand, we're actually showing a relatively weak hand, right? You were showing less than 10 points and a whole bunch of spades. And this is our closeout bid, even on this auction. So that one is off the books here because our hand is way too good. So here we bid four diamonds, and this is not just 10 plus points. It should look a little weird to you guys because we're essentially Q bidding at the game level, right? Our four diamond bid forces our partner to bid at least four spades. So here, we are absolutely showing a game forcing hand, which is 13 plus points. And you may be asking yourself, what does it matter? You know, we were going to bid four spades anyway. Why do I have to cube bid to do this? And that is because what if partner actually has more than just their garden variety opening hand, right? They could have like 18 points, especially when right hand opponent is preempting. So we want to make sure they know we have strength because if they need to continue, they'll know that we have the sort of hand that could cooperate with them continuing to go to go higher than just game. Right, does that make sense to everybody? Let me know in the chat if you have any issues. But for now, I'm going to jump on to the next hand. And this one sees our partner open one spade and our right hand opponent pass. So what do we do with this hand? Partner opens a spade and it goes pass to you.
Okay, so I'm glad everybody's taking a call with this hand because you definitely want to bid. The best bid is four spades. And this is interesting because technically we're not in a competitive auction yet, right? No one is bid by the opponents. However, on this auction, we should expect our left-hand opponent to be entering the auction almost always, right? We have a really bad hand. Our partner only opened one. Now, they could still have some strength in their hand, but we certainly have a lot of trump, 10 total, because our partner opened one of this suit. And on top of that, we have something just as important, if not more important than trump length. We have shortness, right? That shortness in diamonds on this hand is really quite good for playing strength. And even though this is only a five count, it's certainly worth a lot more than that if we're playing spades. And what we want to do, the best part of this bid is it closes the opponents out of the auction. Or at least if they are planning on doing something, they're going to have to make a decision at the five level. And think of how easy our decision was. We had 10 trumps. We competed to the 10 trick level and we're looking really good on this particular hand. And the best part is if we have... If, we, if our partner has a bad hand, meaning they had opened some sort of 12 count, it's really good for us because it means the opponents essentially have a game, right? So the, the less our partner has, the better it is for us. And for those times where partner has a stronger hand, like maybe they were considering rebidding 2-0 with some 1819, now we rate to be making four spades. So it's a great two-way bid, and the, the, the real thrust of this bid, the real reason we're making it, is because we want to preempt our opponents out of our auction, right? With a good chance of making it. And if we're going down, folks, don't worry. We're probably going down less than the opponents could have made had we allowed them into our auction. So this is why this bid is so effective. And especially when you have shape. If you were super balanced with five spades, maybe you would be a little more cautious. But here with five spades and shortness, it's looking really good for a nice four spade bid. All right, let's take a look at the next one. This time our partner opened a club, sorry, our partner opened a spade and our right hand opponent bid two diamonds. Make your call with this hand. Partner opened a spade and right hand opponent bid two diamonds. And if you're wondering here, you can tell this is a, a lesson that's titled Cubids, but if every single one with a cubit was a cubit, we wouldn't be having too much fun. And we wouldn't make be making too many mistakes after like the first two choices. So we're gonna mix it up a little bit and don't worry, we'll drop in some cubits from from time to time for you. All right, this is interesting. We have about half and half. We have half of you bidding two spades and half of you bidding three spades. And the interesting part is neither one is wrong. One just happens to be way better than the other. And the best bid is three spades. Again, for that preemptive value that we're getting by jumping. Two spades would show the same six to nine or six to a bad 10 that we know it does. But when we have four card support, Here's the other bid we, we get back when the opponents decide to enter our auction. We know we can Q-bid with our strong hands, so now our jump raise becomes a preemptive bid entirely. And all it shows, based on that first slide you saw, is usually seven or less points, usually somewhere around four to seven, and it guarantees at least four card support in the trump suit. All right, so when they enter our auction, if we definitely are planning on competing, we want to make a very quick competitive bid if we can to preempt the opponents out of our auction or at least to a high level. Right? It makes it much harder for them. And again, easy decision for us. And to be honest, if we decided to bid two spades, which again isn't wrong, let me ask you this. If it went three diamonds on our left, pass, pass back to us, would we bid three spades? And the answer is, based on the law of total tricks, you certainly would.
So why give them the opportunity to discover more when we can just bid three spades right away? And that's the best call with this hen. Everybody okay with this? I'm going to give it a couple seconds because this is not a cubid, but it is absolutely related to the cubid. And the rule going forward will be any time we can cubid to show a good hand, the jump raise is a bad hand. So here we could cubid three diamonds to show a good hand. So the jump raise of three spades is now just this hand, kind of a pile of garbage with four cards in the spade suit. And as you can see, five of us bid three spades, four of us bid two spades. And double is interesting. Double would show hearts, but it would certainly always deny four spades, right? When we have a nine card major suit fit, we're just always going to show it in some way or another right away. All right, next hand. This time, our partner opened a club, and our right hand opponent bid one spade as an overcall. So, partner opened a club, and righty bid one spade. What are we doing? All right, let's take a peek at the best bid, which, if you were on your toes, you got right. The best bid here is double. I got you. I tricked you. This shows how much of a jerk I might be to you on these hands. This is a clear negative double, right? Our partner opened a club, righty bit of spade, and it looks like it's a cubid. And which is why a lot of you bid two spades because you're right you when you evaluate your entire hand you have 10 or more points counting all your shortness and you have a fit in clubs so i'm glad a lot of you got on the cubid train however when we have a chance to show a major we take it right away so we can't cubid yet to show club support because we need to show four hearts first so we double and then later on in the hand if partner doesn't show a heart fit we will come back and we'll raise clubs there Okay, so be careful. Even though it might look like a cubit or a preemptive raise in some spots, don't fail to show the rest of your shape, especially when it's a major suit that you can show. Do that first and then come back to that club suit later. So the doublers, three of you, great job. You, you were not fooled on this hand. Uh, the jump to three or four clubs here would still be preemptive. And this hand is kind of too good for that. I, I, if I didn't have a fourth heart, I would cubit most likely with this hand for sure. All right, next one. Now this time, our partner opened a heart, and our right-hand opponent bid two spades, which again is one of those preemptive jump overcalls. And anytime you see a preemptive jump overcall, guys, just just think like a week two. That's exactly what they're showing, right? A good six-card suit, less than ten points. You know, baddish hands with good suits. So what are we doing after our partner opens a heart and righty jumps to two spades? So just a reminder to everybody, uh, you don't want to make your bids in the chat because everybody is kind of making their own choices. So if you want to bid along with us, 
make sure you're logged into bidbox.xyz. You can open up an extra browser on your computer or on your phone or iPad. Head to bidbox.xyz in your browser and you'll be able to bid privately on your own device there. And it is correct. The correct bid here is three spades. And this is again very much like the first hand we saw in the set here. This shows more than just that 10 plus points for the cue bid. And that's because once again, we're forcing our partner to the four level, right? When we bid three spades, partner's gonna have to take a choice at game or above, right? So anytime we're forcing the game, we just have to have the values to handle that. And here, when we count all of our points in our shape, we have more than enough. Uh, any heart bid, just like we saw on that first slide, any heart bid here, would tend to be weak. However, three hearts is interesting. Three hearts can be even up to like 10 or 11-ish because we can't cube it unless we have a game forcing hand here, right? So three hearts would kind of be one of those weird in-between bids. And we just chalk that up to a good preempt by our opponents. So they took a, an option away from us that might've been a good one. All right, let's see the next hand. And again, guys, any questions, type those right into the chat. Type everything into the chat except your bids. So this one's always one of my favorites. And I'll give you guys a, a few extra seconds to maybe figure this one out. But our partner opens a heart on this auction, and our right-hand opponent overcalls two hearts. And this is the Michaels Cubid. So if you would asked the West player on this hand what that was, they would tell you that their partner just showed five spades and five of one of the minor suits. That's what their two heart bid showed. So now that we know that, how do we proceed with this hand? Okay, guys, this is a, a tough one. It's a tricky one. The correct bid, which, don't worry about it, no one got this right so far. The correct bid was two spades. And let me talk to you and see if we can wrap our heads around this, because this is a pretty straightforward situation if we just recognize what East has shown. So... East has shown five spades and five of an unknown minor suit. And a helpful way to think about this is if they have five spades, just pretend that they overcalled one spade. So if it went one heart, one spade, what would we do with this hand? We would bid two spades to Cubid, right? We show 10 plus points and heart support. So in this case, we're doing the same thing, except East didn't technically bid spades. However, we all know they have five spades. So ask yourself this question, is partner ever gonna think I wanna play spades? And the answer is hopefully not, <laughs> right? They're, you're not gonna play in a suit that your opponent has just showed at least five cards in. So this becomes our cue bid. And it looks really hard at first, but if you think of it logically, we know they have five spades. So my cue bid is gonna essentially be any suit I know that we're not bidding naturally, right? I'm certainly not gonna bid two spades to play spades, I'm gonna use it to show heart support and 10 or more points. And don't forget also guys, the Qubit doesn't show four card support ever. In fact, it shows anything that gets us to an eight card fit, right? So in the major suits, it's always at least three. 
or let's say our partner opened one club instead, now our raise would be five plus in that suit. So it's whatever gets us to an eight card fit, and it's always 10 plus points. So any questions on that, throw it into the chat, guys. We can come back to it if need be. The next hand we see our partner open one heart, and our right hand opponent jump to three spades. What do we do now? Partner opened one heart, righty really made it tough. They bid three spades. This would show usually a seven card suit because right? they could have just bid two spades to show six. So this is even longer spades, still a terrible hand though. All right, most of you are nailing this one. And the correct bid is actually four hearts. We bid four hearts on this hand because the opponents have really taken away anything else that we could do that would make sense. Uh, we could qubit, but there's a massive flaw with a qubit here. <laughs> if we bid four spades, we've essentially gone past the game level of our own suit. We're really not going to do that. So this is just one of those weird spots where we have to tip the cap to our opponents to preempting us effectively because we have a bid that isn't as descriptive as it could have been. Right? On the hand or the example we saw earlier, it was one heart, two spades. Now it's much easier to just make a normal cue bid because we're still below the game level. Here we're kind of forced into making a really wide-ranging bid of four hearts, right? Partner's not going to know if we just have a hand that has lots of trump or if we have a hand like this, it's just a normal game-forcing hand. So in some spots when they do preempt effectively, we're going to have a tough time getting all our bids in there, and that's exactly what's happened on this hand. So another win for the preempts, unfortunately. But if you're making them effectively, you'll get your wins as well. All right, let's see the next one. And so this time... Our left-hand opponent started with one diamond. We passed originally, so we were actually the dealer on this hand. And it went one diamond on the west. Our partner overcalled one spade, and it went double to our right. So pass, one diamond to our left. Our partner bid one spade, and our right-hand opponent doubled. What do we do here? This must be a good question. We already have four different answers. One of them is the correct answer. Give it a couple more seconds, and then I will take us all out of our misery here. And the important part of this exercise, guys, no matter whether you're getting them right or wrong, the reason I built this is so you get all get to make your choice. Learning Bridge is about to honestly making mistakes right you're gonna have to make your mistakes in order for it to sink in sometimes right so always 
come up with some reason for making your bid. Try to get the right one. And if it's right, great. If it's wrong, even better, right? Because you're going to learn from it. So make your choices. And the correct choice here is three spades. All right, so once again, we had a wide range of choices on this one from all of you. We had some three spade bidders. Actually, most of you bid three spades. Four of you out of out of the, the answers bid that, which is awesome. And that's our preemptive raise. Shows like four to seven and four card support. Uh, the two spade bidders, again, not wrong, right? Or not necessarily wrong. You're actually almost too weak for that with your shape here. But why not preempt them more effectively, right? West is getting ready to do something, right, and to respond to the double. If we get in there with three spades, we're certainly making it much, much more difficult for them. And pass is just a little too timid, right? We, If we can preempt, especially considering, look at the vulnerability on the top here. We are not vulnerable in north, sorry, west and east are vulnerable, right? So really juicy spot for a good preempt. And this is the luxury of bidding and competition, folks we get to use a lot of different bids because we now gain a suit, right? When they've bid something, we gain that suit, the Q bid, right? So we, we widen up the meanings of our other bids and now we have all the tools to deal with any sort of competitive auction. All right, guys, let's take a look at the next one. This time, our right-hand opponent opened a diamond. We made a takeout double with our hand, which is perfectly normal, very good shape for that, good high card values. And our partner responded one heart to that. And now it's back to us. What do we do? So once again, right hand opponent opened a diamond. We made a takeout double and it went past. Our partner bit a heart and it went past back to us. And it is your call. All right, so seven of you have answered so far. None of you have made the correct choice. And this is one that very few people get right the first time or the, the sixth time they see it because it's a little counterintuitive here. But the only correct bid is to pass. All right, so on this hand, we have already doubled. So... We've shown an opening hand and this shape, essentially, right? So when we've done this, we have absolutely described our hand perfectly. And our partner bid one heart, which in response to a double shows zero to eight points. Remember, partner was absolutely forced to bid. They cannot pass our takeout double. So when they bid only one, they're showing the lowest of their values, which starts with zero. So the counterintuitive part of this is if we open the bidding, let's say a minor on this hand, let's say we were the opening bidder and we started with a club and our partner bid a heart, we would always have to bid two hearts because partner made a forcing bid. So it looks totally normal to do that here. However, things have changed. Partner, in fact, has not shown any values for their bid because of the way we forced them to do that. So here, the bit of two hearts would actually show a much better hand. It would be more like 18-ish plus, right? It would be the power double. So here, we should be very secure that partner knows what they're doing. And guess what? If they don't know what they're doing, it's an opportunity for them to learn also, right? So here, we cannot bid again at this moment. 
So we're going to pass. And here's the thing. If West now comes to the party and makes a call and it comes back to us, now we can freely bid two hearts because of our fit. Because we've already communicated to our partner that we weren't willing to go beyond one heart at the time, right? So once we pass, we can kind of open up our our bids, but here we have to pass first. And I'm just going to give it a couple seconds. If you guys have any questions on this, put pop it into the chat. Because I want to make sure we're clear, because this is one that I've done the last couple of weeks. Everybody's getting it wrong, right? Because it looks so normal, but in reality, it's the exact opposite of normal, right? When partner shows a bad hand. By bidding only one heart, we can't bid again. If they had bid two hearts, right, or even three hearts or something that shows a better hand, we certainly would have to consider continuing. But when they only bid one, we know we don't have game, so we bail out at the lowest possible level. Everybody okay? I'm going to move on to the next one. Here we go. Oh, I forgot to show you guys the results for that. There was only one correct bid, unfortunately, and I think that was me, but that's okay. We got to see these things. So this time, our partner opened a club, and our right-hand opponent bid two spades. Our right-hand opponent tonight apparently loves to preempt. Must be one of my regular partners. What are we doing with this hand? We have six, answer, six answers, uh, three are right, and three are wrong. So we're batting 50-50 here. Ooh, a seventh just came in. All right, I think we have most of the answers, so I'm going to show you what it is. It is pass, folks. So here's what this might look like. It might look like a negative double, which is what uh, two of you actually bid on this hand. Or it might look like a qubit if we realize or if we think partner has more than just three clubs, right? So that's why the qubit is wrong in one direction. We don't have enough clubs to actually qubit, but also we don't have enough points. Right? A normal qubit is going to show like 10 plus points, and a qubit at this level, bidding three spades and forcing to the four level, would probably show just a bit more than that as well. And double here is interesting. It's right for the shape. We do have four hearts, and that's what this double would be showing. However, when we're thinking about making the negative double, we want to just judge where partner will have to bid next. And if we double here, and let's say partner has some hearts they want to bid, we're forcing them to the three level. And we only have seven points. This would show more along the lines of an invitational type hand, like a good 10 or more. Okay, so here... We have to use one of the more underutilized bids in our bidding box, which is the pass the pass bid or the pass button if you're playing online. All right, Don't ever forget about this as a viable option, especially when we know partner is going to have another bid. All right? So if we're, if we're waffling sometimes, and this is going to happen so often at the bridge table, we're kind of not going to know what to do. If it's not clear and we're not particularly strong, passing and letting partner reopen the auction is always a good choice. And that's what we would do here. All right, next case. 
So this time we're we're looking at a qubit from the other side of the table. All right, we opened a heart. Obviously with this hand, it's only 11, but I'm using the rule of 20. I'm adding my 11 high card points to the total number of cards in my two longest suits, which is nine in hearts and spades. That gets me to 20, and that gets me to an opening bid. And now it goes two clubs on my left, and my partner bids three clubs. Pass back to me. What do we do with this hand? All right, it looks like almost all of you are making the correct call of three hearts. And here's what I want you to do in this situation, folks. When partner qubits, right, you've opened the bidding or you've overcalled, and partner makes a qubit showing 10 plus points and support for your suit, you're just going to ask yourself at this moment, can I make game opposite 10 points from my partner? Because that's all you can assume they have. And the answer with this hand is definitely not, right? We we were edgy opening the bidding, and now we would be kind of super aggressive to be bidding four hearts. We would be hoping to get lucky. And another situation that we can see here is that it's another spot where partner is going to have another bid, right? The Q bid is always unlimited in strength. So while our partner is only showing 10 plus points, it could have like 15, 16, even more than that on hands like this. So... It doesn't mean we're going to play three hearts. It just means that opposite 10 points, we're unwilling to continue the game, which means we don't have somewhere around a good 14 plus. We're less than that. Okay, so if we bid three hearts, it might go all pass. It might go four hearts from our partner. They might have had a better hand, or even in some weird spots, and they might be trying to play slam. Right? So we give them every opportunity, but all we can do is describe where, where we are at this particular moment. And for us... We're not quite at the game level, so we're just going to bid three hearts. I promise you also one other thing. Um, at some point, if you're new to Q-bids, you are going to either pass a Q-bid or get passed in a Q-bid, or if you're like me, you get lucky and do both, <laughs> okay? It's it's sometimes just you're, you're not even thinking. You're thinking, oh, they showed support, so I can just pass. Never forget to bid. <laughs> you always have to bid... Go back to your suit at whatever level your point count suggests, and when you're at the low end, go to the lowest possible bid you can make, okay? Um, and when you do get past in a qubit or past a qubit, it's going to be a lot of fun to play. It's going to be very interesting, one of the few times you'll play in like a 2-2 fit. But just have a laugh, realize that it was a good mistake, and move on from it. It'll happen to everybody. All right, let's take a look at the next one. This time, our right-hand opponent opened one heart. We overcalled one spade, and it went pass, and our partner bid two hearts. And then it went pass back to us. So what are we doing in this situation? Again, one heart on our right. We overcalled one spade. Our partner bid two hearts. And the question is, what do we do now that it's back to us?
All right, guys, I'm seeing a lot of people trending toward one bid in particular, and that just so happens to be the correct bid on this hand. And we didn't really do anything differently than we did on the last example because it's the same exact situation. Our partner with their two heart bid showed 10 or more points and support for spades. And we looked at our hand and said, okay, opposite 10 points, can we play in game? And the answer is a clear cut, absolutely yes. So we bet it here, right? We're very unlikely to have anything more than game in this particular spot, uh, but partner can still bid again, right? We're not closing them out of the auction. We're just telling them, look, you showed 10 points. I know we have at least enough to play game at this moment. And you know, we probably have even a little bit more than that but we'll be in a safe spot in four spades. So we've seen the response to the qubit where we don't have enough for game. We just bid at the lowest level. We see the ones where we clearly have enough for game and we're probably not going anywhere else, and we bid four spades, or four of whatever suit we're finding ourselves in. Now let's take a look at this one. We've opened a spade. Our left-hand opponent has bid three clubs, and our partner bid four clubs, and it went pass back to us. So what are we doing this one? Again, one spade by us, three clubs by our left-hand opponent, and our partner bid four clubs, and it went pass back to us. All right, so we have a mix of a mix of bids here that people are choosing. Um, I think four spades is probably the one that's not is the least correct, let's say, because four spades, we're probably just going to end up in four spades, and our hand is just too good for that at this point. And the one thing I'm not sure we all recognized is this bid right here, the four club bid, is not our garden variety ten plus anymore. Right. This is just like the one we saw from our side of the table on the first couple of slides. We bid, or our partner made a qubit at the game level. Right, So this is 13+. plus. I cannot have less than that to force us to game. So they're showing a very, very big hand. So we want to continue, or at least we want to communicate that we continue some of you actually bid for no trump which is good thinking you should recognize for sure that you do have some extra values not just some you have a lot of extra values really so in this spot you certainly want to try to go a little bit higher than game if your partner wants to cooperate with you the problem with for no trump though is we have these two small clubs this is a bad spot for Forno because let's say partner gives you one key card and then they show you the queen of trump after you ask them and you play six spades. And let's say partner also tables two small clubs. Guess what? You just bit a slam and you lost the first two tricks. So whenever you have two small in a suit, especially a suit that the opponents have been bidding, you don't want to start with your key card, right? You essentially want to go about it a little more deliberately. And that's what four diamonds does. Four diamonds is what's called a control bid. And I know those of you that have seen these online lessons before have probably seen me talk about these. But it's worth revisiting. When we know we have a fit, and that four club bid guaranteed we had a spade fit. And when we are in a game forcing auction, which is exactly what four clubs also did. Any new suit is not necessary, right? I'm not going to be bidding diamonds here saying, hey, I want to play diamonds. I already know we're playing spades. So a new suit at this level says, hey, partner, 
I have first round control in the diamond suit, either an ace or a void, and I'm interested in playing higher than just game. And this is the third hand, right? The first one we saw, we didn't even have enough for game, so we bid at the lowest level. The second one we saw, we had clearly enough for game and likely nothing more, so we bid game. Here, we know we're in a game force, and we want to proceed past game if it's there for us. Right, so we communicate that by bidding a new suit. And that says to partner, let's talk a little further about getting above game. So those of you that bid four diamonds, there were two of you, great bid. You kind of got the best of all worlds. Because now we can shut this down before we get too high. Those of you that bid four no, I like it. I think it's a very good idea because you should certainly see that you have a whole bunch of extra values and your partner just showed 13 points. But be very careful those small two-card suits can be devastating, even if you have enough high-card points for game. So, uh, good, good question, Thomas. The reason the four-club bid on this hand is equal to or better than an opening hand is because we are forcing, or North is forcing us to the four level. Right? So we kind of have no choice but to bid at least four spades. So because of that, because this qubit is existing at such a high level, it has to be 13 plus, because think about it, with 10 or 11 points, or even a bad 12 point hand, North would definitely not know they have enough for games, so they would likely just be bidding three spades here. And, and the opponents have done a very decent job of preempting us, which is why that four club bid is better than just our normal qubit at lower levels. It has to be 13 plus because partner has just forced our side to the game level. And if we're opening 12 to 21, we are absolutely going to be having 13 points be a game for us. Uh, the, the way we find out about a club stopper is essentially by control bidding. What we're hoping to hear is partner show some sort of control bid in clubs and or make their four no trump bid themselves. So the four diamond bid is showing control in diamonds and asking partner to do something helpful for us in that suit. So after four diamonds, if partner had some sort of control in clubs or if also partner just had a hand they wanted a key card with, they would bid again. If they didn't, they would probably bid four spades. And then to be honest, you would probably come back and bid five diamonds also, just saying, look, I have a real problem in the club suit because right? we've now gone past the club suit to bid another control. And that's getting a little further beyond the scope, but I just wanted to give you a heads up here. Sometimes when partner qubits, especially when it's a qubit at this level, we may have more than game. Right? So we want to certainly find out the best way to do that. All right. And uh, we just do a couple more questions. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Appreciate the question. And let's take a look at a couple more slides, and then we will call it an evening here. So this one, we started with the opening bit of one club. Our left-hand opponent overcalled one spade. Our partner doubled, and our right-hand opponent bid two spades. So what do we do here? We opened a club, lefty bit a spade. Our partner doubled, and right-hand opponent bid two spades. What do we do with this one? Right, guys we have a lot of different choices here the best choice however has to be one of them and the best choice is four hearts now what we saw here was our partner make a negative double right 
We opened a club, our left-hand opponent bit a spade, and our partner doubled. Anytime we see opening bit of a suit, over call double, it's just that negative variety. And partner's just saying, hey, partner, I have four hearts, at least, and I have around eight or more points. Right? That double has to show eight or more because they're essentially forcing us to the two level. Right? So if they're going to force us to bid at the two level, they have to have a little bit more than that normal six that they have when they respond at the one level. So here we should know partner has around that many points and our hand is honestly spectacular, right? We know we have a heart fit. We also have an amazing source of tricks on the side. Ace, king, queen, six, the clubs. And we have shortness in two different suits, right? So this, if we, if we add it up old school wise, point count wise, we're gonna have enough to bid for, but also just the shape. And anytime you have a solid six card suit that's not Trump, it's an amazing spot, right? Not only that, we have a nice entry to that suit should things go a little weird for us and we can't get there. So all things are pointing to we're going to make at least four hearts. So you bid it aggressively, bid right to game. The worst case scenario is you decide to bid three hearts and partner just checks out of the hand and passes, okay? So you got to get your side to game when you have this much extra strength and the extra shape that comes along with that nice club suit. All right, I think we have our last hand here. And before we get to that, I just want to thank you all for joining me tonight. And I'm wishing you all a very happy, uh, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving next week. Uh, it'll be dark here for at least a week or two, but then I'm planning on doing a few more of these classes online, uh, more towards this level, like competitive auctions, and also hopefully some, some more defense. We're getting, getting a lot of emails about that, so you'll see more from me in the future. But until then, let's take a look at this last hand and see what we do on this auction. Here, our partner passed originally. Our right-hand opponent opened one diamond, and we made a takeout double. Again, normal, we have an opening hand, good shape for the takeout double, and it went pass, and our partner bid two diamonds. Pass back to us. So what do we do? Hey, Allison, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, um, thank you so much for the compliment. It's very nice. Glad you could be here. I, I'm loving the, the Vancouver connection here and Victoria connection in British Columbia. This is awesome. Some good scuba diving up in that neck of the woods. So partner is making a qubit. The question is, what does it mean here? This is different than the ones we've seen throughout the evening. And it's because of what we did first. And before I answer, I'm just going to take a look at, at why this is different than what we were looking at prior. This is certainly a qubit, right? So it's it's going to show a good hand. Whenever we've done something first in our partner qubits, they're always showing some sort of good hand. Usually it's with a fit. However, we didn't bid a suit originally, right? We actually showed three different suits, but we didn't actually bid one naturally. We doubled, right? So we showed... A reasonable number of cards, three or more, and the three unbid suits. So that qubit takes on a different meaning here, and it says the same number of points. It says I have 10 plus, but when we're responding to a double, it actually says the reverse of what it usually says. This time it says, hey partner, I have a good hand, but I don't know where we have a fit yet. I want you to tell me more about your hand. And all we would do in this situation as we're responding to this is we would show partner whatever major we have four in. If we have both, we bid it up the line as usual. But on this hand, we actually only have one major, so we would just bid two spades. Two spades would be the correct answer with this one. And we would 
just be telling our partner, hey, I don't have four hearts, but I do have four spades. And if we think about it from our partner's perspective, when we have doubled the minor suit like we have, we're showing at least four three in the majors, which is exactly what we're looking at, by the way. We're looking at four three in the majors, which is our minimum requirement for number of cards in the major suit. If they have four hearts and not four spades, they're not going to really know for sure that they have a fit. So this two diamond bid could really just be, hey, I want to find out if we have a major suit fit. If we don't, I'm planning on doing something else. But it's the same point total. So don't forget that, guys. The Q bid, whether it's responding to partner's suit bid or their double, is going to be the same always, 10 plus points. Except in this case, it's, hey, I'm not sure where our fit is. Whereas in all the other cases, when we bid a suit naturally, it says, I have that suit. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad these are working out so well. Uh, any feedback you guys want to leave, you can just send me an email at rob at learnbridge.nyc or you can just comment right in the video, uh, the video notes on this particular video. So uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Again, have a wonderful holiday. And I will keep putting this stuff out there if you guys will keep watching. Uh, as, sorry, Allison, may, maybe a little, sometimes Wi-Fi um, is a little spotty in some spots, and, and with the actual Bridge BidBox app, if you ever run into any issues, just click refresh on your browser. So sometimes it might get a little spotty if it's a bad connection, but refresh will get you back to the current hand we're on, and I'll, I'll make sure to make that announcement next time as we're going through. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, and you're, you're going to see me if you're looking at the BidBox app. I'm going to cycle through a bunch of the hands that we didn't necessarily get through, but those will also come to you via the email, so you get a chance to practice these on your own. Some of them are maybe slight duplicates from what we saw earlier, and others are going to have some different stuff in them. So enjoy that, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, folks.